The next step is the actual administration of the medication. And so here's where we have to work very closely with the nurses who are administering the meds, but also with the patients and the family members too. Uh, we might have some care resistant behaviors that we have to address. And so we need to be careful about that. And we also have to be aware of this issue of covert administration. When you um, put medication in food and the patient perhaps has some cognitive impairment and doesn't realize that they necessarily realize there was medication in that food, that's considered covert administration. There may be some legal, legal implications there um, that might be worth talking to the uh, physician on the case about. Generally, we try to put some specific protocols into place for each patient, um, and again, include some flexibility. Patients are gonna need more than one strategy for medication administration, because what works with tablets may not work with capsules, what works with larger pills may not work with smaller pills. Um, so we need to make sure we're providing patients with a number of different options within these uh, med administration protocols. It's a good idea to have access to those medications that cannot be crushed so everybody knows which ones those are. Um, and we need to be sure that we're uh, addressing the dry mouth issues before um, it's time to take the pills. So perhaps some sips of water before the, it's time to swallow the pill so the mouth is a little, is a little wetter and the um, transit of the, the medication through the oral, pharyngeal, and esophageal cavities is gonna be facilitated. Sometimes when patients really absolutely can't swallow medications, we have to, you know, we have to make a decision. And when I say we, I mean the speech pathologist, the patient, the nurse, the physician together, we have to make a decision. Is it worth giving this medication at this point? What are the risks of, of not swallowing this medication efficiently, the risks of choking, the risk of aspirating this medication as compared to the benefits of the medication itself? Is it better that we, do we perhaps wait until the patient is more alert? Do we perhaps wait until we've done a full swallow eval to see exactly what's going on? And so sometimes we have to make that, you know, to get the team has to kind of make that call. This may not be a medication we want to administer right now. And as a general rule, one pill at a time and follow each medication with food, with liquid, and then take another pill. We wanna make sure we're getting good transit through the esophagus um, and certainly good pharyngeal transit as well.